Hi everybody, my name is Eugene and I want to provide you a quick status update for Paper Merge. In this screencast I will talk about current situation and what is the plan for July, August and beginning of September 2020. Let's start. At this point there are two current stable versions, 1.2 and 1.3. From user point of view there are almost no visible changes between 1.2 and 1.3. It is so because all changes are internal. In version 1.3 I introduced metadata. But again, those changes are not visible to the end user yet. My point here is that if you are using 1.2, there is almost no benefit of updating to 1.3. 1.3 is developer-friendly release, which means that this version 1.3 makes it easier to develop further changes in paper merge. 1.4 version, which at this moment is in development, adds a lot of UI changes. Besides new UI, version 1.4 introduces user interface for handling metadata. As I mentioned before, version 1.4 is still in development, but it is in a very good shape, so I can show you a quick demo. But before jumping to demo, I want to introduce you briefly to the concept of metadata, so that you'll be on the same page with me. I will explain metadata by example. So in case you'll keep collecting receipts like I do, they will pile up uh, like you see here in this picture. Because receipts in this folder are very similar, searching for specific one by content won't help too much. So in order to organize this digital mess, the concept of metadata is introduced. In my case, every receipt has three pieces of useful information. A shop where this receipt was issued, a date when this receipt was issued, and a price. You can think of these three pieces of information as labels attached to the document. So this name, shop, and the value, Reve, or this um, name, date, and a date attached, uh, 1905-2020, is actually metadata for this document. So a metadata, or one item of metadata, so to speak, has a name and a value. In a folder, there are many documents. Well, receipts in my case. And defining metadata for each and every receipt is not practical. A more practical way is to define metadata on the folder itself. So metadata names like shop, date and price will be defined on the folder. This way metadata defined on the folder will automatically be inherited by all documents inside that folder. It may sound a little bit confusing at the beginning, but it's actually very simple in use. Let me show you. So here is the new login screen. It looks a little bit different. So let me log in first. And here is the new user interface. Uh, you will notice a couple of changes. So first of all, this left bar is a little bit different. Anyway, let me create a folder. I'll name it Groceries 2020. And in this folder, I will upload some files. Also notice that when I uploaded them, I chose uh, Deutsch or German as a main language. So the content of these files will be ocr uh, with the assumption that this is German language. So at this moment, I want to define metadata for all files in this folder, in folder called Groceries, uh, Groceries 2020. So let me go to this folder. So when I select the folder and click on this one, you will see here this metadata. So I want to define a metadata uh, named shop. And what I didn't mention uh, during the slides is that besides name, shop in this case, and the value, which I'll add a little bit later, every metadata has a type and a format. So in case of this one, shop, you don't care about type, so you leave it just text. But in case of price, so I want to add a metadata price. I will uh, select type as money and the format that this, uh, the money value will be introduced is uh, this one. 
DD, CC means basically dollar dollar comma cent cent. And let me add a date. And a type will be date. And the format, I will choose this one. After adding these three uh, metadata fields, I will click save. And then whenever I go um, inside this folder, and if I select now uh, a document, you will see the same metadata that I defined on the folder. Uh, the metadata is inherited. So each and every of this document inherited whatever I defined on Groceries 2020 folder. Also, you will notice that now I cannot edit it. It is because these fields are inherited and inherited fields, they cannot be edited. The only thing you can add uh, or change is the value. And to change the value, actually, I need to go to the, um, to, the, um, to the document. So let me open a receipt. And now you see the same metadata thingy, but you see here a field called value where I should introduce actually the value and type and format you can see by um, clicking this little arrow here. So value for the name shop is little. Let me briefly introduce it. Then the price. And instead of introducing it, I'll actually copy it. I'll place it here. And a date. Let me check if I can copy the date. Well, it's not that correct. It's actually it's wrong. So let me correct it here. Right. And also I'll check the format. So 02 is day date, mm is month, and this is a year, right? And here format notice is a comma here, and here's a comma. I save it, and I'll quickly do the same thing for the other two documents. Once I introduce that metadata, there's a very cool thing which you can do. And that was not possible in the previous versions. So notice here, uh, you see everything as grid. But you can also choose list. So if you're in list mode, then you'll see besides title and type of document, you'll also notice three additional columns, shop, price and date. And as I mentioned before, this uh, release is still in development. So the sorting does not work, right? It's still in development. But obviously when I release uh, uh, version 1.4, you will be able to sort by date. And in this case, for example, if you're looking for a receipt um, with a specific uh, price or a date or a shop, you'll be able to find it very quickly. So I'll repeat again, because this is very important that these additional columns here, shop price and date are displayed here because they are defined on this groceries 2020 folder. If I go outside this folder and I leave the same list mode, let me do that. I'll click on home here. You'll notice that the only three columns are type, title and created. And if I'll create another folder, let's say invoices 2020 and I'll go inside this folder, you, you see that only type, title and created that column are displayed. And even if I upload files, again, you see only uh, only these three standard, so to say, columns, because no metadata thingy was defined on this invoices 2020 folder. And again, I can switch back to this um, grid view. Regarding roadmap, for the rest of July, I'll be fixing bugs for version 1.4 and maybe I'll add a couple of small features. Release 1.4 will be available in August. I'll provide a Docker image for it and obviously I'll update all documentation. Also, I'll update papermesh.com uh, website and papermesh.de as well. And, which is more important, I'll provide an online demo so that you'll be able to play with latest stable release directly online. Starting with September 2020, I'll provide hosted solution. Also, for those of you who choose to install Paper Merge on their own network, but you want security of knowing that you got support when you need it, from September 2020, I'll start offering 
Pro Support Plans, which basically is paid support. I'll be back with more details about this by the end of August. I hope you enjoyed the screencast. Thanks for watching.